Hello everyone, I'm so glad to meet you here at um, Symphony UK, even though it's just remote, but well, I'm either way really glad that you are sharing your time with me and listening to me showing my passion about end-to-end -end testing or how I got quite confident in end-to-end -end testing, even though I thought it would be flaky and hard to maintain. Well, let's start with a little introduction of myself. As you heard some seconds ago, my name is Ramona and I'm working at Quality Assurance at Shopware AG. Shopware, it's a company which is uh, publishing an open source e-commerce platform. And so I'm usually the one taking care of the quality of the core project and the plugins and coordinating the testers. Coming to my main task, test automation. I love to automate the routine task of the tester so that they can focus themselves on the more important task where you actually need a human with his, with their creativity and knowledge and all those kind of things. Well, but first thing first, let's talk about testing in general. Um, in this slide, you see a little example for a testing strategy the testing pyramid, which displays a possible ratio between different testing types, starting with the base, which is quite fast to execute and thus quite cheap when it comes to um, yeah, spending money. And the top, which is quite slow in execution time and as a result, quite expensive. So this is the way why this um, pyramid has this shape and gives you a little um, impression on how many tests you should write. Starting with the base, with unit tests, which are checking basically the little units, the little components of your application. The middle stage of the pyramid is the integration testing, where some more units are tested in combination to each other. And last but not least, end-to-end -end testing, the topic of this talk and the main focus we will talk about. Well, what is end-to-end -end testing? End-to-end -end testing is, I like to call it a workflow-based testing approach, where you are testing your workflows from beginning to end, like a system test in quality issuing theory. Well, um, you have a computer in this case, who is simulating a real user clicking through your application and, and interacting with it. And as a result of that, it's quite natural that those tests are taking more time to be executed. As a result of this slow execution time, you need to be really careful in um, prioritizing your test cases. In the context I'm working in, in an e-commerce platform, I like to uh, test the happy cases in end-to-end -end tests of a feature of a test case or any approach I want to give. And as an addition, I like to focus on the most runnable tasks, the ones where damage would be in exit would be really, really harmful, like a broken checkout process or a broken login or registration process. These errors shouldn't be happening at any time. Well, the goal of all of this is making it possible for the human tester that you don't need to use and to, don't need to do those tests anymore by themselves, focusing on the most important task and exploratory testing. Okay, uh, last but not least for a um, little situation explanation and so on, I want to give you a little bit context on why we got to end-to-end -to -end testing, how we choose our end-to-end -end testing framework and why I came to get to know Cypress. Shopware, our e-commerce platform, is based on Symfony. So we needed to find a testing framework which is fully compatible to Symfony applications. Same with our administration, which front end is built on Vue.js. So we needed to find an E2E testing platform which works together with both of them in a good way. And after some research, we find Cypress. Cypress became the framework of our choice. It is an all-in-one end-to-end testing framework, which is based on Node.js. There was um, one advantage I loved the most because I had some experience with JavaScript. I was 
quite glad that the tests are written in JavaScript. So you don't need to learn some cumbersome text or whatever you can think of. And you can use ES6 syntax as well. Another thing which was a relief for me was the fact that no Selenium or web browser is required to use Cypress. So you don't need to worry about compatibility issues anymore. Cypress provides their own solution, which runs in the browser them itself, not just communicating with it or controlling it remotely. So this running in the browser gives you lots of wonderful possibilities. The most important one are the possibilities to help you in debugging. You can debug directly with familiar tools like the Chrome or Firefox Dev tools you are using when you're developing in your browser. That means you have full access to everything, all information the Dev tools are giving to you, starting with the console output or the network tab until settings like um, toggling network or CPU usage, which will help you a lot um, reproducing sporadic failures or an application under load. And as a nice addition, Cypress provides you some readable errors and stack traces, which can help you a lot while debugging failures. Another thing which um, enables you to debug more quickly and more easily is the so-called time travel feature. Cypress themselves, I used to call it time travel, and it basically means that Cypress is taking snapshots of each and every test case, uh, test step and each action the um, application does while being tested. It's taking snapshots of every test run and you can access them via an own graphical interface. It's called Test Runner. And you can use those snapshots while hovering over commands in the command log of this test runner. And in this case, you can exactly see what your application is doing in each step of your test, like running back in time in a way. Okay, enough talk. Let's look at all those features together while writing a little test for the symphony.com website. Please pr pray with me to the live demo gods that everything will be fine and start with a little test. I like to start from scratch. So I will um, create a little directory here. Let's call it symphony London, Cyprus or something. See why is the short form of it doesn't matter. I'll open it. And if you want to install Cyprus, you can basically just run npm install Cyprus. And then Cyprus will be installed. You don't need to do anything else. Of course, if you don't want to use npm, you can use yarn as an alternative or even download the zip file from their website to get it running. It's completely up to you what you want to use. Um, if you want to start the test runner, you need the path to the binary and the command open. Of course, if you prefer to work with the, I'm sorry, if you want to work with the console or the CLI, you can use Cypress run so that you don't need to click through a graphic interface. Again, up to you. Okay, let's start it. And as you see, this is the test runner. You can use some um, examples provided by Cypress in order to get started and to get to know the features. But let's leave it out for now because I prepared a little repository where we can start for our test and which you can look all the examples in later if you want. Um, it should be Symphony London. Oh, let's see. I'm not sure how I call it. Symphony UK example should be there. I forgot to rename it. Well, okay. Here you can open the test runner exactly as we did before. Oh, let's see if it's a bit faster. And 
Yeah, it's a bit slow at the moment. Yeah, there it is. This integration test area will be the place where you spend the most time in the test runner. So please keep it in mind. But before we interact with the test runner, let's look how Cypress is organized in your IDE. Okay. Here you can find the Cypress folder where all the magic of your test will happen. A package JSON where you can define some scripts and dependencies. You may be familiar with it if you ever um, work with NPM. And a little JSON file where you can do all configuration for Cypress, like defining timeouts or defining alternative folders and lots of more. You can even enable video recording and lots of other features. Okay, let's look at the Cypress folder. Here you can find the fixtures folder, which contains fixed test data you can use in your tests. The integration folder, where all your tests are stored in. So we will spend the most time here in the IDE when we start writing tests. The plugin folder is quite self-explanatory. There you can extend Cypress functionality with using some Cypress plugins. And the support folder, which is another way to extend Cypress functionality. If you have some reoccurring actions or some things which you want to use uh, multiple times in your test, you can write own commands to extend Cypress commands in this case. Okay, well, let's start. Here in the integration folder, I create a little file. I will call it open.spec.js because our little first test should be opening the symphony.com site. We will check if a particular string is found in an area and we will check if the logo is available in the site and if it's the right image. All right. Yes, we will add it. Okay. In order to get started with our test file, we first need a little frame, I like to call it. This frame is meant to structure your test file and to make you um, make it possible to use lifecycle hooks in your test. Um, maybe you uh, saw this little dot spec suffix here in the uh, file. It's not a requirement to do that, but it's a convention when using Mocha syntax. And that's a keyword. The Cypress tests are based on Mocha syntax. If you already wrote some front end tests, you might be familiar with it because you can find it in Jest or in Review Test Utils or all those tools. Okay, how should we call this test? I'll call it open symphony.com quite creative, I know. <laughs> All right. This way we have the little frame, but our test is still quite empty, so we should change that. Um, in this case, we are using the if method to create the actual test. I'll call it find getting started heading because this is the string I want to find on the symphony.com page. Started heading. Again, a little function in every syntax. Okay, so we are ready to do our first interaction with our website. Um, when you think about testing a website, what would you do the first thing? What would be the first thing you want to do? It's opening the actual website you were working on. So Cypress brings a little command for that. It's called cywisit. A Cypress command is basically the way Cypress interacts with your site and provides functionality to your tests. So every action would be a command, so to say. Okay, here we need to give a URL as a parameter. Okay, and let's see how it looks like in the test runner. I collapse the other things. All right. So our tests are loading and are executed. 
it looks like the Symfony page needs a bit of time to be fully loaded, but it actually is loaded and our test passed. Yay, our first little test, although it doesn't do anything which is providing us any value. So we need to dig deeper. Okay, we, are want, to, uh, we want to find this string on the side in this area. In order to do that, we need to find this element here first. And in order to do that, that you need to find a unique selector for this element. Um, one minute. Cypress provides you um, two ways of finding unique selectors. The first thing is access via this icon, it's called selected playground. And if you use it, you can hover over any element and see the selector of it. In case of our element, you can copy it here in the input field and with this number, you see that it's unique. Of course, automatic generated selectors can be hard to read. And, and because of that reason, I don't want to use this selector. Plus I don't like pseudo selectors, so let's use the other possibility. The old school one, just using the dev tools. I search for the element here. And I think the CSS selector here, getting started doc, is quite good. Let's check if I can actually use it. And yes, it's unique because I just find one occurrence of it. So I will get back to my test. CY.get. This is a command to actually get the element of the selector we want to use. So it, it will return the element. And on this basis, we will use the command contains to check if this element contains the string we are searching for. Okay, one moment, please. All right, it is getting started. I don't, shouldn't forget the S with symphony. All right, let's save and see what we get. The site is open, the element is found, but surprise, the test failed. So we need to find out why and which mistakes, mistake we did in order to get our test to fail. Cypress helps you with that here with this error reporting here, but there's a better one. You can pin this log entry here. And as the tooltip is already saying, you can inspect all information of this command in the console here. Which command you used, which content you expected, to which element the um, command was applied, which elements are matching, and the error itself. And as you compare the string here with the content we expected, we see that I forgot to use capital letters here, the both S letters. So let's return to our test and correct it. Getting started with Symphony. All right. And it passes, wonderful. And if you are hovering here, you can see where he searched for the element, where he searched for the string and everything like that. It's wonderful to debug. All right. Now we uh, found out that this string is um, actually on this side, but that's too less for me to be a really good test in my opinion. So let's do another thing, another test case. I want to look if this logo here is the logo we expect to have. This one. When I work with the website, I used to um, split my test cases up into little tests in order to um, save some memory resources. So don't wonder why I use little test cases at the moment. Okay, how do we call this test now? Um, I'll call it check symphony logo. Um, as we know, we want to um, access our website first, so we need this command, but wait, 
we are writing the same line again. And that's a duplication I really don't like. So this is a good moment to use lifecycle hooks. Cypress provides you four lifecycle hooks, um, which give you the opportunity to influence the behavior which is executed before or after your tests. There are four, um, beginning with before. Before is executed before all of your tests, like here, if you can say it like that. Um, before each, which is executed before each test of yours, of this file. And similar in after and after each, just after the tests. Um, we want to execute this command before every test. So we will use the before each hook. All right. And there's another thing we can um, make a bit efficient and a bit better to maintain because this URL, if you want to uh, test the Symfony.com website as a whole, you will always have to type it in. Do you? No, you can um, configure it in the cypress.json here as a base URL. And if you did that, it would be the prefix of all the parameter of the URL parameter, sorry, um, which is used in CY wizard. So you just have to write a slash for the root directory to access your website configured here. All right, in order to get something to see in the website, I will um, write one thing first. Um, actually, when I write front end tests, I want to make sure that the site is loaded and interactable before I do anything in the test. Um, there's one aspect which is quite interesting here. Um, see why get and other commands of Cypress already provide you an implicit weight. That means when you are using a Cypress command, you can be sure that the element you're working on is existent in the DOM, but not more than that. You, uh, Cypress won't give you automatically the information if the element is hidden or collapsed or not accessible in any other way. So I like to make sure that it's the case. Okay, let's start searching the element. I use the selector playground now just to cover all of the possibilities. I uh, copy the selector here. I see, yes, it's unique. I paste it here. And then I use an assertion. Assertion, you might know it from other tests you already wrote, is the point where you check your application if it matches your expectations. If an assertion fails, your test will fail. So use it if you want to make sure that your application is doing something you want it to do. In this case, I use my favorite assertion. I really use this be visible a lot, just to make sure that the element I want to interact with is visible for the user and yeah, can be used in the test at all. And in this way, I can prevent some flakiness because I'm waiting for an change in the UI. Really important, wait dynamically. Okay, this be visible chainers um, could be familiar to you if you use chai assertions before. They're, yes, they are based on chai assertions. Okay, let's see how, it, how our test is performing in the test runner. And yes, it takes some time because I um, changed the configuration. All right. Well, let's see what we got. First test is passing and the second as well. And if you look, yeah, we found the logo and it's visible for the user. Okay, but I'm still not satisfied with it. I want to test more here. So I want to use an assertion who makes sure that the image we are using here contains the actual image I expect. Therefore, I use the get to um, get our element. And I write one quite longer assertion. Again, with the should command. I'll check if the um, image has the attribute. 
source for the file source. And of course, most images, if not broken, will have a source. So I'll extend this assertion a bit. With an end command, I use the change and match because I want to compare and a little expression to um, look if the file name of the image is the one we expect. Um, what is the file name? I look it up. It's header logo SVG. All right. Well, let's see if I um, was right. And artists are passing. That's good. And here we see that our image has actually the attribute source. And our expression here, header logo, is matching the source. Congratulations, we did quite our first test together. Thank you. All right. Did I forget anything? I don't think so. Okay. Um, there are two more features by writing tests which saved my life, literally. Um, I want to show them to you, but I prepared them already because of, uh, I guess, if I'm writing all the examples with you together, it could be another talk. So let's look at these examples I prepared beforehand. Um, if you um, have um, some experience with Behead or Mink or other um, test frameworks, you might think about the possibility to rerun the same test, just changing some input values or expecting other results. This was a really cool feature in Mink um, concerning example and scenario outline. I really enjoyed while um, writing Mink tests. Um, Cypress provides you a similar feature, rerunning those tests with little changes in it and avoiding duplication. Let's look at this example at first in the code. Again, you can find all examples for reference later if you want. Here, I want to um, execute the test we wrote before on different viewports. Therefore, I define an error with the devices to iterate. These um, presets are presets Cypress provides us, but you can use any resolution you like. So you are not uh, limited to them. Well, and here you see where we iterate through the error with the devices, which means that for each device we defined, the test will be executed, making it for tests without copy pasting it or something. Let's see how it looks like in uh, practice. There it is. We need to wait a bit as it's um, executed on all of those viewports. And as you see, while hovering over those um, things, here you can see a desktop resolution. Here you can see iPad resolution and portrait. Here can you see iPhone resolution and portrait. And iPhone resolution landscape and plus you can see the time traveling. You can inspect every step your test did in your file. It's a lifesaver when debugging. Okay. Another thing I want to share with you is a topic I already covered a bit. It's about rating times. There's a common trap lots of people run into when starting with NGN -end testing, even myself. Um, this is using a sleep timer or another fixed waiting time to wait for things in your test. And this can cause lots of problems. In the best case, you are waiting too long, causing your test being too slow, slower than they need to be. And in the worst case, you don't wait enough which results in a flaky test when your app is, for example, onto under load and yeah, needing more time than you give it, making it fail sometimes, sometimes not. And those flaky tests are a pain to debug. So please think about another way to wait for things in your interface, like dynamically. 
The first thing would be waiting for changes in UI as we already did in the test before. But the second one, which I like most, is waiting for API requests. Cypress brings you some things to wait for those requests. Um, I prepared a little example for that. Here is the test. In this test, I want to find the lovely elephant at Symphony's shop. And therefore, we will navigate to the shop. We will open the product page and we wait for it to be loaded completely. Means all requests are successful. Well, all is a funny word because I just found one XHR request to wait on, but you know what I mean. Okay. The important section here is this one. The Cypress server method, a CY server, is the method which provides you all the network features, network request features Cypress provides to you. And this can be lots of features until uh, you can even um, stop or mock re complete responses with it or requests or anything. Um, but again, this is a topic, maybe if you want to know more about that, I'll cover it in another talk, but it's quite cool what you can do with that. Next up, we will define the request we want to wait for using the CY root command. Here, the URL of the request is defined and the method we use. Afterwards, we are assigning a little tag, an alias to it so that Cypress can find this request and use it later on. Okay, next up, we are doing the interaction steps to get to our lovely elephant page. And then here, the actual waiting happens. This CY wait will wait for the tagged, for the tagged request to occur, but not more than that. So please be careful here even if your request isn't successful, throwing a 500 or something, Cypress will pass on with the test execution because it's just wait for the request, not for its status. So I like to add a little assertion for it here in complete chai syntax, where I want to let Cypress expect that the request we are waiting for has the property status. And the status should be of failure 200, 200 for OK for a successful request. So if it's not successful, the test will fail here. And if it is, it will proceed. It will continue with its execution. And afterwards, you can do any um, assertions or actions. Just continue with your test. OK, let's take a look at the execution in the test runner. The symphony page is visited. Now we are waiting for the shop to be opened. There it is. And the um, product page is opened and there is the wait call. We wait for the recommend call, which is um, proceeded successful here. And we are checking if the status is successful, is 200. More to that. If you encounter a request to fail or another failure, you can pin the request similar to the command we did before. And if you are looking at the console now, you can access all information on the request, you can imagine. So not only for debugging failed tests, this can come in quite handy to see anything, any information of this request. So this is a way, this literally saved me a lot of nerves when debugging in CI. <laughs> All right. Last but not least, there's one aspect I like about Cypress as well. The test runner and the execution in CLI is completely free of charge. It's open source. So you have lots of contributors and a nice community. And as a result, lots of plugins to enhance your Cypress functionality. Um, in my case, it starts with the usage of a native file upload, and it ends with the complete integration of visual testing, screenshot diffing, another topic which we could talk about later. 
you can yeah achieve lots of things with Cyprus and yeah keep away this routine task this um, task away from the testers where you don't need an actual human and you can be more more confident in your test as you know they are not that freaky and if there's an error you will be fine with debugging it and you have lots of possibilities to get to the core of the problem which can yeah help you get rid of all those testing nightmares you might heard about and that's exactly the reason why i'm so passionate about cyprus i came from lots of compatibility issues from flakiness from tests where i couldn't couldn't reproduce the cause i love to call them heisenberg like heisenberg test which can only fail if you look away making them a pain to debug and with cyprus that this get really better so i think i can be quite comfortable now and i hope i was able to share this notion with you that you don't need to be worried about end-to-end -end testing it's not that painful as you might think it is and yes what more can i say to you then thank you for your attention if you've got any questions feel free to contact me at any time on twitter or here in the meetup or anything i would love to help you getting a little starting point of end-to-end -end testing and yes well thank you <laughs>